Welcome to part two of lecture 17 of aerospace propulsion. So we left off with this question of under what conditions is the second term uh, really involving a pressure difference non-zero for our thrust equation when we have a convergent nozzle. Basically this pressure term only is non-zero if the nozzle is sort of past choked. Um, if the nozzle is unchoked or sort of just right at the choke condition then the outlet pressure equals the atmospheric pressure and uh, the second term is zero. Once we get past choke, what we see is that the, the growth thrust sort of saturates for a purely convergent nozzle. Um, it still rises, but it rises very slowly. Um, whereas if you had, say, a convergent divergent nozzle with a fully reversible expansion, you'd get rather more uh, growth thrust. So what this tells us is that since you can see where these plots start to diverge is around a pressure ratio of about three um, for gamma 1.4, there's no point in having too high of a nozzle pressure ratio. Right, I, don't, I get sort of a diminishing returns. Um, so I kind of want to stick in this region, certainly less than four or five where there'd be you know, any kind of difference, noticeable distance between, a difference between the fully reversible expansion and the completely convergent nozzle. And one thing to note, to keep in mind later um, when we're dealing with turbines is that choked throttles uh, behave exactly like nozzles because they're still a choked flow. It doesn't matter what the shape of the geometry is. Yeah, but for this reason, in a commercial aircraft engine, we would typically keep, keep the overall sort of flight um, times fan pressure ratio sort of low to try to um, not lose potential thrust because of um, the, this diminishing return. So three, four, probably the highest overall pressure ratio you'll see for based on the flight speed plus um, fan pressure ratio. So speaking about fans, right? So the fan is what drives that pressure ratio into the nozzle. Fan is just a single stage compressor. So here uh, I'm going to introduce the idea of a fan or compressor characteristic. And that's a plot like the ones shown here. This is for uh, some specific commercial uh, engine fan. Um, the stagnation pressure ratio is shown on the vertical axis. The corrected ma or the non-dimensional mass flow normalized by the design value is on the horizontal axis. And then the labels of these curves are lines of constant uh, uh, corrected speed uh, in terms of fraction of design. At the top, we have contours uh, or plots of isentropic efficiency. Um, we don't have absolute numbers here because uh, fan data tends to be very jealously guarded by engine manufacturers. Um, but we can see that there's sort of a 5% variation uh, over this much. So you know you get uh, maybe at five, around 10% variation from the highest to lowest efficiency points. Um, and again, these are labeled based on the associated uh, speed and the, the, the mass flows that correspond to them. So the efficiency varies pretty significantly, you know, we, uh, around 10%, maybe a little bit more. Um, and at constant speed, constant rotational speed, if we reduce the mass flow, um, we see the pressure rise goes up, um, and this is because we're increasing incidence. But why? Why does increasing incidence onto the rotor blades raise the pressure ratio? So I want you to try to think about this and explain why at a constant rotational speed, lowering the mass flow, which increases the incidence, raises the pressure ratio for a fan or a compressor. Um, you'll probably want to draw velocity triangles to try to figure this out. So take a few minutes and think about this yourself and try to come up with an answer before you move on to the next part of the slides uh, or the video. Um, and during the tutorial, we'll take this up too.